and lose. Everyone liked it. Yeah, you <laughs> lost. But it's it's like, like, hey, come I on. Like it. It. All right. So <laughs> since we have since we have someone, uh, Vance, you have a life that you have to live. You have about 13 minutes before you have to leave I'm or you're going to get your ears boxed. You turn into a pumpkin. Uh, we're going to kind of jump the order. And Vance, I believe you're going to be a Teron Grial esque uh, facet for Drew for his unpopular opinion. And we're going to try to get through that before you have to go. So and what by is jump this? We mean that all of us are going to be out in 13 minutes. And I'm actually just going to cede my time to Drew via Vance. So have fun. Let's, <laughs> let's hear what Drew has to say. Right. So Drew's unpopular opinion was Jordan had no idea where he was going when he started the story. Ooh. Is that, <laughs> is that the whole thing? That's the whole thing. Cause that's just no, accurate. Yeah. I mean, I, that, when he sent me that, I was like, bro, that's like, I mean, <laughs> so here's my take on it. We'll go ahead and jump right into me. I don't think it's 100% correct. I think Jordan knew where he wanted to land. I think he didn't know how he wanted to get there, though. That's for sure. So it's a, it's I, a, it's a you know nuanced uh, a differentiation of it, but I think that's more accurate. Well, yeah, because he initially started, he thought he was going to finish the series in six to seven books maximum. No, no, he went to the editor. Oh, his, and said, I'll was his initial three. three? Yeah. Oh, the to initial. Be fair, I the think initial he could have done was it in seven. three if he had gone ahead and said from the beginning that he was going to do it in three. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, so because I think reading the Eye of the World, I could see the whole thing take three right. books. Yep. Mm -hmm. But once you get to book three, and he's still going strong, you're like, I don't want this to be three. Nope. Yeah. I, think, I think he was playing a I game of he, spades, and he underestimated yeah. how many books in the game he could win. He so think, bet like three books, and he was like, No, I can actually win like fourteen right. slash fifteen. Oh shit! Well, so I'm gonna shoot I, the moon here. What I think I what actually <laughs> happened was he nice. went to Tom Doherty and he was like, "Hey, I've got this trilogy I want to do." And Doherty was like, "No, nah, you go long. Do, give me six. So it was actually Tor that told him, "Yeah, give us six, not three. So, well, can we also can we also mention having your and this is probably a super unpopular opinion. I think she did a great job, but having your wife as your editor might not be the best idea at times. You might want an independent voice. What is going on? In what general, your wife, I, I can't dispute the theory. Having Harriet be your editor, I think was a fantastic <laughs> move. There you go. Oh, so Harriet might be an exception dots. to the bullet overall genericism dots. of having your wife be the editor. But there is the argument we've made, like, well, who, who would feel more comfortable telling you in private that they think that you did something wrong than somebody intimately involved in your life, if it is a true, uh, valid, intimate relationship. Yeah, right. no, and definitely if it's a partnership, like it very, very much seemed like it was between Harriet and, and uh, you know, Oliver Rigney, um, it really Who? does... Who? No, Robert I'm Jordan. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it really does seem like there was no better person to go ahead and discuss things with in the wheel of time uh, because they were on a very similar page. I'm sure they didn't agree all the time, but they were on a very similar page as to what the series should go for. So I actually completely agree that your partner is a great person to have be your editor. Can be. Your wife is not necessarily a great person to be your editor because your wife is not always your partner. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be. I'm saying that they aren't always. I mean, and we see proof with Harriet because of what she made Brandon do with For example. Bella. Huh. She was like, no, you got to hurt Bella. You have to do it. And Brandon's like, no, 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 no. But it still happened. When we wrong, we find out in the do campaign it. that she survived. Right, right. Hurt hurt that wreck Bella. Bella. Right. But that wrecks so many people. Like, you, you love really. Bella, whether you realize it or not. You love Bella. Right. And then whether like, you think she's the Bella's creator gone. or not, she's beautiful. <laughs> right. What a staggering. Yeah, yeah the companion, that companion little addendum really bothered me. I'm like, wait, no. Bella's alive? And at the at, at Edmonds Field again? What the heck? To be fair, oh, going not to just the that. actual she had, she had theory offspring. here. Right. So going to the actual theory here, I actually got, coming from this world really very much feel like the we uh, sorry the eye of the world is the 
pilot and or first season Mm -hmm. of the wheel of time it absolutely is and i think that as you already said and and jk rowling uh, any feelings that you have on her aside absolutely did the same thing as far as the first book of harry potter where Mm -hmm. when she was writing the sorcerer's stone she also wrote the battle between voldemort and harry potter so she knew where she was gonna land and when the seventh book came out very very little changed about the last battle for hogwarts now granted there's a whole thing there that i don't love because it actually sounds like she wrote it during the sorcerer's stone and that's a whole different thing but again i actually agree totally with what van said that i think robert jordan knew where he was going to land but absolutely changed almost everything about how he was going to get to Tarman Gaiden mm-hmm. between the time that he wrote The Eye of the World and the time that he died and passed things on to Brandon Sanderson. Uh, and so I, I think that that's not necessarily an unpopular opinion, though it's not complete. That's what I, I would agree mm-hmm. with you, Vance, as far as that All right. being true. Well, Ryan, you're next. You like that? I have my hand raised. I know, right? It's fantastic. Perfect use Puff, of the finger. Puffy sausages. <laughs> it's in a, it's some sort oh, of oh. bind. Yeah. These are not <laughs> injured. This is how it this is it's okay. Don't don't be alarmed, everybody. Okay. When I saw Brandon Sanderson, I mean I'm geez, I'm sorry. When I saw Robert Jordan at a book signing in Santa Cruz, California. I, um, the classic kind of hippie Santa Cruz type got up and, and, you know, I think he literally might've been wearing a tie dye and he goes, oh, excuse me, Mr. Robert Jordan. Uh, you can, were you ever surprised by where the story took you or ever, were you ever like in, inspired by where the, the characters are going and, and do you ever surprised by where, we, and he goes, Hey, he basically shut him up <laughs> and they, and he goes, I'm an old Testament God. When I write, everything I do is on purpose. I knew from the very beginning what the ending is going to be. And I'm making decisions to how to get there. And I've known from the get from day one, this has been mapped out and he made it very explicitly clear that like, literally this is almost like a vision that he had from the very beginning. Now, when I see the dusty wheel and they go through the notes, I do see that there are a lot of, changes that seem to contradict that attitude he was showing and during it live like that was very dramatic how he said that and i'll never forget it he is an old god if someone dies is because i killed them is how he basically said it i mean let's not forget i don't mean to interrupt the simple fact that the framework for what happens the biggest event of winter's heart we get the guidebook to in eye of the world Mm mm-hmm how do mm-hmm. you cleanse Sidene? Well, if you knew it was coming and you know what to look for, like Rand definitely didn't, but got lucky enough because plot armor, and he has fantastic people around him, like men that read a bunch of books that are like, you need to do this kind of thing. You know how to cleanse Sidene from the end of book one, but nobody in book one is going to look at that shit. I guarantee you there's not one single person. There's not two single people in the entire world that read the eye of the world got through and was like in like seven books they're gonna figure out how to remove my ta- the taint from it but the vast majority of couples got it though only two single people but the vast <laughs> majority of couples that's because when you google how getting, to get right that's because when you google how to get rid of the taint smell like it's mm-hmm. one of the things that pops up but badger yeah uh let, let's move to you because i do want vance to hear the conclusion of thoughts on this topic at least before he has to dip out uh vance there's also a, a dm so for you on discord if you would check Drew it that he was wrong and this yeah. is why let's go punch yeah. drew in the gonads but anyway sorry badger go ahead i guess i just have like a a quick a, a quick thought ish um and kind of what on on the topic you just mentioned in terms of what's there in eye of the world there's definitely quite a lot in eye of the world that's setting up for future things so i think while it was like a season one and i think there were also maybe a lot of threads of the pattern that robert jordan was planning if he got a chance to do more Um, and he might he didn't know where all of them were exactly going to branch but he at least had ideas of of where they were going to start threading 
Um, I think there are some writers and see this in movies, J.J. Abrams maybe sometimes with perhaps the first Star Wars um, of the new trilogy, just makes mysteries and has no idea where they're going to go um, and just thinks, I'll figure all these things out later. And I think Robert Jordan maybe did that with some things. Like there are a few men visions that we get that it's like, that doesn't really seem to connect to anything at all in the series whatsoever. Um, but with most of it, it's like, wow, he must have had an idea at least of what that was going to mean because it's so omniscient at the beginning once you read a, a section later on. Mm -hmm. So the original, the original theory was that having Harriet as one of the editors was a bad idea. That was that an was aside. A, no, that was no, we a, got that was a tangent. That was, that was, that was a secondary hot oh, oh, Too, too, was, too many people. That was me. Sorry. I know. What was the original theory? The original theory was that Jordan had no idea where he was going when he started the story. Oh. Mm. Yeah. All right. So I think, I that think that's all something of us we can vote on. Are disagreeing with that? Uh, I, I, I will throw so. out there that there are a actually vote. a number of things <laughs> uh, so, that that don't necessarily come to fruition or that the rules change a little bit between Eye of the World into the rest of the series. But I definitely think that all of us are on the page that at least Jordan knew where he was landing, if not most of how to get there. May not have known the specifics. Or exactly. But he, may have, yeah. but he knew exactly. So yeah. I mean, when you let's create a, a story like this, you kind of have to know. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's take a vote. If you believe that RJ had no idea where the series is going to end up, go ahead and raise your hand. Don't be shy. So most Twitter, unpopular. Twitter. Well, most unpopular. George, George R. R. Martin is a gardener, but Robert Jordan was an architect. And so uh, George R. R. Martin just kind of sees what grows in his garden and reacts. Uh, but Robert Jordan, I think, had much more structure and idea. So let's give it an extra vote. If you believe that Robert Jordan knew where the series was going to end, but was uncertain of the path that it was going to take to get there, raise your hand. What do you mean, like 100%? Like, like 100%, like out? he might have had, let's say, no more than 50% of it figured out, but the other 50% mm -hmm. was, let's see what happens with the characters as I write them. So if you think, all right, let's go with this. He knew it was going to end, but he only 50% or more knew what was going to happen to get to the end, raise your hand. Wait, only uh, fifty percent or less. Fifty percent or no, less. no. Nope. No, I'm saying fifty percent or, or more. Oh, I'm okay. saying fifty percent right. or more. I think so. And and the oh, okay. quick reason I'll say is because almost every character in the Eye of the World is a main character the rest of the time. All right, sure. so we got three out of three. Now let's say same scenario. He knows it's going to happen at the end, but he only knows forty nine percent or less of how they're going to ah, get there. Okay. Raise your hand. I'm so confused. I, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to be on the early. I think he knew way more going into it. I, I messed it All up. Right. Do so we start over? No, you're, you're, no, you're fine. You're so good. we have a four, a four to two vote right now. The Robert Jordan knew most of what was going to happen to lead to the end of the yeah, series. That's me. No, it sounds like it's a five to one now. <laughs> like an, an astonishingly amount. There's, of that there's only six people we... here. And I think Dan voted with me that he knew less than 50%. Ah, okay. I didn't realize how that you were voting was get less to the than 50%. Okay, I was cool. voting yeah. less. I don't think that. he planned like on it. over a thousand characters being yeah. named and all that. I don't think he planned all Dude, that. Dude, and like nine. That being said, I think he knew forty nine percent. Aes Sedai with yeah. a with a name that starts with S. Yeah, it's like ninety percent of the, the rest name started character. with A. The rest right. started with A. But I think he knew about like forty eight point five three nine six two four nine six eight nine tailgate fine percent. That, okay, fine. that checks okay. out. That checks out. But anyway. Uh, we do have the moment. I know Vance, you have to you have to dip out. Uh, but if you do have like two minutes at max or so, why don't you go ahead and where can we find the Gleeman? What are you guys about again? Where can we come and enjoy you and not just you, but Drew as well? Right. So we are the Gleeman on YouTube. That is the space Gleeman. Men as in plural men, not man. Um, we just released a culture series video this week, uh, as well as I released one about Perrin and Fail on Monday, and Drew has one that's supposed to be out as today as of recording, though I'm not sure if he met a schedule, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. But uh, yeah, go check us out. Uh, we're also on Twitter and Instagram, where mostly we're shamelessly hawking our own videos and occasionally uh, partaking in some polls with everyone else. 
Do you have ran, um? Do you have dates for those episodes? Like dates, because we don't know exactly what date this episode is going to come out on. Right. So, the Culture Series Part Two video we released. Ooh, it says two days ago. Today is August fourteenth, so that would have been August twelfth that that came out. Nice. Well, there we look go. forward to more videos from the two of you. I'm sure that there will be at least a few that drop between the time that this is recorded and the time that this is posted. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Go yeah, follow the Gleeman. Go follow the Gleeman on everything you can. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow on you on uh, not YouTube, but I mean, if it gives you Everyone. both options, do it. But follow <laughs> definitely on uh, on Twitter. I believe you said you have an Instagram as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, go follow them everywhere. Follow. Yeah, they're fantastic peeps, and maybe if I can bug Vance enough in the future, they'll have their own Discord. Yeah. Possibly. Well, we need we need a little bit more of a following. We're fifty subscribers strong right now, so let's go. Yeah, and get some that's more. fifty never, never people too early that don't to have a place to go, Vance. I did 40, my part. Forty of them are already in other Discords. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> that's true. It's Fair never enough. too early to start, but it can always be too late to start. Well, it's I don't very think much that works like, with the hey, internet. Hey, but. I mean, Gleeman don't run the tavern, guys. Gleeman go around and entertain true. other people's, Ooh. right? Uh, what are you guys doing to this guy? You're trying to change his whole thing. He's going to become like a Vin- owner. Vin- He's going to like think about fair. Now I feel like HIPAA an and all the, you know, getting sued for, you know, malfeasance. I'm That's not worried obvious. about HIPAA. They're not doctors. They're Gleeman. <laughs> Well, Vince, I mean, you're saying you it's like he's got to create his own. Like, he's got to. He's got to create his own server. No, no. If someone happens to create it for him, and then oh, he has yeah. ownership. Who knows? Who knows <laughs> what happened? There we go. You'll just get a, You'll just inherit an inn called the Randy Gleeman, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> Do I make you Randy, baby? Do I make you burp? But Vance, uh, thank you so much for making the time. Uh, I know that you need to go right now before you get your ears boxed. <laughs> Tell Drew that we love him, that we missed him, uh, and I'm sure there will be opportunities in the future uh, for you guys to come back on to the Black Tower podcast right. kind of event type thing. Event awesome. type thing. Yeah. All right. Type. Thanks for having us, and yeah. uh, I will catch you all later. Yeah. Have a good one, Bye, man. Vance. Gleeman are awesome, man. They are.